Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now... With over 200 episodes made, originally airing on NBC Radio Network from 1944 to 1950, we bring to you Boston Blackie. Do I have 25? Let him hear 25, Blackie. You sure you want to marry? Yes, I do. I got 20. Do I have 25? 25. Do I have 30? 30. The man in the green hat says 30. Do I have 35? 35. I heard it, and thank you, sir. Do I have 40? Uh oh, that man in the green hat is coming over this way. So what? This is a public auction. Do I have 40? 40. The man in the green hat says 40. Do I hear more? You better not hear more, bud. Do I, I can hear only any bid more? the 50, so don't you go any higher, sir. 40. Do I hear any more? The man in the green hat has bid 40. Do I hear 45? Oh, you can only bid 50, huh? $60. 60 is bid. What does the man in the green hat say? man in the green hat doesn't say anything. What does the man in the green hat say? At 60 going once, going twice. Sold for $60. Congratulations, sir. So you got the vase and congratulations, huh? Maybe condolences would be a better word. And now back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. <laughs> Hello. Blackie, this is Mary. I'm home now. You can bring that vase over any time you want. Well, I'm going to be busy for a couple of hours, Mary. I'll send it over by messenger, huh? Oh, thank you, darling. Thanks a lot. Okay. I'll see you for dinner? Oh, uh, yeah, if you like. I like. Oh, that's probably the messenger for the vase now. Tell him not to drop it. <laughs> I'll tell him what it costs, then he'll drop it in fright. Oh. I'll call for you around 6.30, how's that? Well, I'll be ready. Bye. Bye. Come in. Well, you messenger, sir. Oh, the man in the green hat. Yeah. Uh, sorry, there's no auction here today. But there's something here that was bought at an auction today, and I'd like to have it. Then why didn't you outbid me for it? I uh, didn't have a door with me. Too bad. Look, I'll give you the 60 bucks you paid for it if you let me have it. Sorry, but it isn't mine. I bought it for someone else. Well, tomorrow I'll give you $500 for it. No deal, pal. But I want that phase, and you're going to give it to me. You won't want what I'm going to give you. Now, get out of here. Look, I can get you... Keep your hand out of your pocket, pal. The only hand I like to see with a gun in it is mine. Like this. Okay. You win. This time... And there had better not be a next time, or I'll knock that green hat right off your head the hard way. You're hurt. Then I'll come in and sit down. Here, there, take it easy. I'll take the package. Miss. I have it all right. Now, just sit down. Let's see what's the matter with you. Oh, you're bleeding. Shot. And then badly, I too. Shot. Please, please, Hit take me. it easy. Here, let me unbutton your collar. Oh, I'm all right. I was driving get here. Thing back, in my car. And guy with a gun. Now, now, don't talk anymore. I'll go get a doctor right away for you. Thank you, Miss. But I don't think. I don't. 
No, I don't think you do need a doctor now. But I need Blackie. And the police. So, uh, what did he do, Miss Wesley? Deliver this vase to you and then die right here in your apartment? Yes, he did, Inspector Faraday. I was going to call a doctor, but it was too late. I'm not blaming you for this, Mary, but I wish you hadn't liked that vase at the auction. Well, what's the vase got to do with this, Blackie? Everything, Faraday. That funny-looking piece of clay on the table there? Now, you don't know what you're talking about. Inspector, it is not funny, look. Hey, you're so right, Mary. It's beginning to look rather gruesome to me. And what it means to the man in the green hat, I don't know. What man in what green hat? I bought this vase at an auction this morning, Faraday. A man in a green hat bid against me until I went too high. Yes. About an hour ago, he came to my apartment and frankly pulled a gun on me because I wouldn't sell it to him. Are you trying to kid me? Faraday, that guy had murder in his eyes when I told him he couldn't have this vase for any price. He must have had murder in him. He killed the messenger boy. Yes, I'm pretty sure he did, Mary. Just after he left, the messenger came to my door. Green Hat must have seen him, followed him, taken a shot at him. But the messenger managed to make it here so Green Hat didn't get the vase. Blackie, you mean to tell me a guy would kill for that, that funny-looking piece of junk? The looks of a piece of pottery may be only clay deep, Faraday. Maybe it's a valuable vase. An antique. One of those Ming Dynasty things worth thousands of dollars. Uh, what's a Ming Dynasty thing? Something that's old and valuable. And if I expect to live to be old and valuable, I think I'd better find out what the vase is worth. <laughs> expert on pottery, Mr. Dandy. Could you tell by looking at a vase how much it's worth? Well, not to the dollar, Blackie, but I could say whether or not it was valuable. Unwrap the vase, Faraday. Let Mr. Dandy have a look at it. Okay. Be careful, Inspector. That's mine, remember? Yeah, and you can have it, Miss Wesley. Here, Blackie. Thanks. How much did you pay for this, Blackie? Sixty dollars at an auction. Sixty dollars? Don't tell me I fell into a bargain, Mr. Dandy. Yeah, it must be worth plenty. A guy committed murder for it. Murder, Inspector Farrell. I can't understand why. This is a cheap factory-made vase. There's even imperfection in the design. I would say it was not worth more than two dollars. Where are we going, Blackie? Well, Mary, if this vase is worth only two dollars, then the man in the green hat isn't after the vase itself. But what's inside it? Oh, what could be inside it? A lot of things, Faraday. Bakes right into the clay. Well, we could break it and see. Oh, no, you don't. That's my vase, and I like it the way it is. In one piece. <laughs> don't worry, Mary. We don't have to break it to look inside it. That's why we're taking it to an x-ray lab. We're going to find out what's inside this vase that would make a man in a green hat see red. <laughs> Here's the x-ray picture of your vase. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Come on, Faraday. You can have a look at it, too. Yeah, you bet I can. Let me look, Blackie. Here, here. Get in here, Mary. Oh. Well, what do you see? The, uh, the outline of a vase. Yes, but nothing else. This means there's nothing in it, Doctor? Not a thing, Blackie. It's just a plain vase made of plain clay. Well, maybe this picture doesn't show what's really in it. It shows there's nothing in it, Inspector. And pictures don't lie. I say this one does. Let's break the vase. That's the best way of seeing what's oh, in it. Oh, no, you don't, Inspector. That's my vase, and I like well, it. Well, I don't like it. It's the cause of a man being killed. And I'm going to break it. Faraday, don't be a Inspector, nut, Inspector, just give me that vase. Give it to her, Faraday. Oh, all right. Take it, Miss Wesley. Well, don't let go of it so fast. It's heavy, and I... Oh! <laughs> I thought you didn't want it broken, Miss Wesley. Oh, <laughs> Golly, I would drop it. Oh, fine, John, one, Mary. Mm. Let's look at the pieces and see what's in them. Yes, look at the pieces, Blackie, and prove to Inspector Faraday my picture didn't lie. I think this will convince him, Doctor. Look at those pieces, Faraday. There's none bigger than a dime. My beautiful vase. Your beautiful vase was. <laughs> Your beautiful vase, Miss Wesley, is a beautiful mess. And this beautiful mess, Inspector, poses a beautiful question. If there's nothing in this vase, why did the man in the green hat kill that messenger? (laughs) 
Here's 51 Sunset Parkway, Faraday. This is where... Uh, I can read, Blanky. This is where you get out, get off, and get going. Now, just what was the meaning of that? I mean, I think you're holding out on me. You took something out of that vase. Something the guy in the green hat wanted. Faraday, there was nothing in it to take out. Yeah, that's what you say. Now, come on, tell me the truth. Won't mean you've done anything wrong. After all, you bought the vase. Uh, that gave you a right to uh, whatever was in it. Well, thanks for that much, Faraday. But I'm telling you the truth. There was nothing in that vase when I bought it. There was nothing in it when I... Well, when it broke. You saw that yourself. Well, I'm taking the broken pieces to headquarters to have them looked at just the same. You're wasting your time, Faraday. With the pieces of that vase and with me. Want to come up to my apartment with me? No. I'm going back to headquarters and see how we're doing on finding the guy in the green hat. Okay. Hey, close that car door, will you? Oh, sure. There, Faraday, I've closed something for you. Now see if you can close something for yourself. The case of the man in the green hat. Find out about the man in the green hat, it'll be a feather in your cap. <laughs> Unless you look good and let... Well, so it's that green hat again with that man under it again. Where's that face? That face? Oh, it's uh, it's all over. It's broken. You lie. I don't lie very well, mister. Not at all with a gun pointing at me. I told you it's broken. I could kill you for that. Yes, I suppose you could. You've already killed one person to get that face. What if I did? The face is important to me. You killed that messenger boy? Yes, and I'm going to kill you right now unless you give me that face. Then tell me where it is. If you weren't so intent on keeping your eyes on me, you'd see the vase you're looking for over in the corner there. Which corner? Where? There, or rather here. <laughs> How's your chin, pal? Oh, no, I'll put that gun of yours in my pocket. You can't be trusted with it. There. There's no vase in the corner there. No? Well, there isn't a brain in your head, either. Oh, you'd know the trick I just pulled on you. is the oldest in the book. Okay. What happens now? I happen. I happen to call police headquarters, and then you'll happen to be taken to a nice, clean cell. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Blackie and Mary Wesley buy a vase at an auction. Later, a man in a green hat who bid against them comes to Blackie and tries to get the vase from him. But Blackie refuses to give it to him and sends the vase to Mary's by messenger. The messenger is shot and killed. Investigation proves the vase is no value and nothing is found inside it. But obviously, the man in the green hat has thought it worth his while to kill for it. Unable, however, to find out anything about the vase or the man in the green hat, Blackie returns to his apartment where he confronts the strange man a second time. In a fight... Blackie overpowers him and calls for Faraday. As we return to our story, Faraday has just arrived. Okay, Faraday, here he is. The man in the green hat. Come on. Now, how do I know this is the man in the green hat? Because I say so. He pulled a gun on me. Oh, no, Blackie, not that. Since when have you started to get excited about somebody pulling a gun on you? I don't actually care about that, Faraday, but this guy confessed to me that he killed that messenger. Is that right, mister? That guy's wacky, Inspector. He probably killed that messenger himself. Now, Blackie, what kind of a snap are you trying to make out of me? Any kind you prefer. If you can't figure out a way to get this guy down to headquarters... Well, to get him down there, I have to hold him for something. And what's he done wrong that you can prove? All right, Faraday. If you can't arrest him for what he confessed to me or for pulling a gun on me, then arrest him for carrying a concealed weapon. I never carried a gun. Oh, no? You might search him and see. Why, of all the... I'm getting out of here. Search him, Faraday. Just uh, once over lightly. Yeah, Inspector. Go ahead, search him. Then maybe this guy will keep his mouth shut. Oh, it's a good idea. Find anything? You know I'm not going to find... Hey, what's this? Looks like his gun, Inspector. Hey, I didn't have that on me a minute ago. But you do now, don't you? I put it on you where it belonged. And now you're going to jail where you belong. <laughs> I 
I got it, Blanky. We took fingerprints of the man in the green hat and found a match for them here in our files. Oh, swell. Who is he? Uh, Frank Kittredge. Kittredge. Yeah. Faraday? You know, I have part of the answer to this already. Huh? The vase I bought once belonged to a Nancy Kittredge. Yeah? She died last week, killed in an auto accident. Could be this Frank Kittredge is her husband or brother. So what? The vase was still worthless, Blanky. And Kittredge still killed that messenger in, in trying to get it. Well, look, who was Frank Kittredge? What had he done to get his prints in his file? Robbed a bank six years ago. He was let out of jail just the day before yesterday. Well, now, we're getting somewhere, Faraday. He robbed a bank, huh? Ever recover the money? Not a dime of it. Uh, it's getting almost simple. Kittredge wanted that vase because it had something to do with the whereabouts of that stolen money. Now, what could that vase have had to do with it? It was empty, and there was nothing buried in that clay. I know. The thing is, Kittredge thought it had something to do with the money. We know that vase didn't. But there may be another vase. Well, then why wasn't Kittredge after the other one? Because for the same reason. He he, he thought that uh, that he wanted the one we had. Look, how long are you going to hold Kittredge? Well, we're going to arraign him uh, in a couple of hours. Uh, you'll have to testify against him. Okay. I'll be back in an hour. Where are you going? Back to where this all began, Faraday, to that auctioneer's. There must have been another phase in the effects of Nantry Kittredge. That's the one Frank Kittredge wanted. And the one I'm going to get. <laughs> I auctioned off all Nancy Kittredge's property. Just sold the last piece this afternoon, Blackie. Well, look, Mr. Smith, do you remember the vase I bought this morning? Yes, I think I do. There must have been another vase in the stuff of hers you auctioned off. There, there has to be another one. No, I'm mistaken, Blackie. There was no other vase. I'm sorry. You're yeah, sorry. You don't know how sorry I am. <laughs> Next case. Frank Kittredge, charged with carrying a concealed weapon. How do you plead, Kittredge? Not guilty. Who preferred charges, Inspector Faraday? Uh, Boston Blackie. Boston Blackie, come forward, please. I'm right here, Your Honor. You charge this man with carrying a concealed weapon? No, Your Honor, I do not. Well, what's the matter with you, Blackie? You told me this guy pulled a gun on you. Sorry, Faraday. And there is no charge. You can go, Kittredge. Thanks. Wait, wait a minute, Your Honor. Case dismissed. Next case. Blackie, you, you double-crosser... What's the idea? A good one, Faraday. I'll tell you all about it later. Hello? Mary, this is Blackie. Oh, Blackie. Did the auctioneer have another vase? No, but I'm convinced there is another one. And I'm letting Kittredge lead me to it. How? Well... I got him out of that charge of carrying a concealed weapon. And that guy's not dumb. He did just what I thought he'd do. He's come right to the auctioneer's. How do you know that? I trailed him as far as the auctioneer's building. He's upstairs with the auctioneer now. And I'm down here in the lobby of the building in a phone booth. What can the auctioneer tell Mr. Kittredge that he didn't tell you? All he can do is tell him the same thing. So, then Kittredge is going to go look for it. Oh, I see. And you're going to tell him. Uh Uh-oh. Here he comes now. I'll call you later, Mary. Right. No, wait, Mary. He's getting into the phone booth next to mine. Will you be able to hear what he says? I'm not interested in that. If I can just count the clicks as he dials, I'll know what the number is he's calling. All right. I'll be quiet. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two. One, one. You got it, Black. Yes, Mary. It's Barrett, Abbott, or Acre, five three two one one. I'll call you back. I want to get in touch with Faraday right away. Right. Faraday speaking. Faraday, this is Blackie. Yeah, Blackie, but uh, speak louder, will you? I can't. Listen. Go to your telephone number crossfire, will you? And give me the address of the number for Barrett, Abbott, or Acre, 53211. Well, there is no Barrett or Acre 5, Blanky. It's got to be Abbott. Okay, look it up, will you? Sure. Hold everything. I'll do that later, but right now, I'll just hold the phone. <laughs> Yes, 
Yes? Is Frank Kittredge here? Why, why, no. Who are you? Boston Blackie. He just called you. Sure he did. What do you want with Frank? And nothing right now, Miss Thomas. But I want something from you. A vase. A vase? I, you must be in the wrong... In the room. wrong house? Well, right or wrong, I mean. Look, I don't understand what this is all about. You want a minute as soon as I find that vase. I'm sure you must be in the wrong house. I'm in no mood. There it is on the table over there, exactly like the one that I bought at the auction. Oh, oh yes. Uh, my sister made that for me. She gave it to me years ago. You're Nancy Kittredge's sister, huh? Well, that explains a lot. Wait, you can't take that vase. I'm not taking it anywhere. I'm leaving it right here. Well, you can sweep it up. What did you do that for? To find this. This little cylinder. Where did it come from? The vase was empty. This was baked into the clay. Why? Only your sister could tell you that. She made this vase, you said? Yes. She used to work in a pottery, but what's that? Okay, Blackie, where is he? Did you find that other vase? Was there anything in it? (laughs) One thing at a time, Faraday. Yes, I found the vase. There it is on the floor in pieces. Good heavens, the police too. Well, Blackie, did you find anything in that second vase? Yes, Faraday, this little cylinder. And inside it, guess what? A receipt for a trunk in storage at the Jepson warehouse. And in that trunk, I think you'll find the money Kittredge stole from that bank. Thanks, Blackie. Uh... I'll take that. And now we're going to stay here and wait for Kittredge. I don't know what makes you think he's coming here. Didn't he phone you about a half an hour ago? Why, yes. uh, He doesn't say he wasn't coming out to dinner. Didn't he ask you about a vase? uh, No, no. Well, that means he didn't know it was here. I know. That tells me where he thinks it is and where he is, too. Where? At Mary's. He still doesn't believe my story. Come on, he killed a messenger. He tried to kill me, and he may try to kill Mary. Miss Wesley, stop lying to me. You got that face, and I know it. Please, how many more times do I have to Not tell you? Not many, I because don't... if you don't stop lying to me, I'm going to put a bullet right through your head. I... I want that face. I don't have it. Honest, I don't. The police do, and it's broken the bits anyway. Stop lying. I'm telling you the truth. Okay, I said I'd kill you, and I'm going to... <coughs> hand, Mary. Pick up his gun. Oh, good. I got it, Blackie. Nice shot, Blackie. Come on, Kedrich. You're going to jail. Oh, Blackie, I've never been so happy to see anybody in all my life. Oh, shock, Mary. Quite nothing. Quite nothing at all. Hello. Remember me? Well, hello, Blackie. We going to break any more vases today? <laughs> no, Mary. In fact, I've brought you another one to replace the one you broke. What? Now, may I come in? Well, of course you may, but you didn't have to buy me another one. No, I wanted to. Okay. You know, I still don't know what this is all about. How did that storage receipt get into that vase in the first place? Well, Mary, Frank Frank Kittredge robbed a bank and knew he was going to jail for it. So he put the money in storage, gave his wife the storage receipt. And then she put it in the clay as she was making the vase, huh? Yeah. And according to Frank's confession this afternoon, he watched her do it, too. Yes, but darling, she made so many vases in the pottery. After it was baked, how would she know which one held the receipt? She made a slight error in the design, then bought it from the pottery herself. Well, yes, but weren't there two vases just alike? Yes, there was. And that's what caused all Frank's trouble. After he went to jail, his sister decided to double-cross him. She made another vase, just like the first one, gave the real one to his sister, and kept the phony one for Frank to have when he gets it back. But didn't she think that Frank would know she tricked him when he didn't find the storage receipt in that vase? She was going to pretend someone else had made a mistake in the design, just like hers. He didn't have to believe her, because he saw her put the receipt in the clay before she made the vase. Oh, I see, and she was going to use the stolen money herself. Yes, yeah, someday. When she felt she needed it, she might have taken it out of story as soon as Frank went to jail, but she was afraid it was too hot. Well, here's the vase I brought you to replace the one you broke. Don't you want to see it? I certainly do. Uh, finish unwrapping it, will you? All right. Where? How do you like it? Oh, Blackie, it's beautiful, it is. Here, here, let me have it. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. Gonna put it right over here on the... Oh! Oh! Oh, Blackie, wouldn't you know it? It smashed the bit. That's all right, Mary. Only when I come back, I'm gonna bring you an iron bucket. <laughs>
that concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.